faith without works is dead. What does that mean? Does that mean that we have to earn our way to heaven? I thought faith was enough. Well, let's talk about it today. We're working our way through the book of James, and we're in James 2 today. So we're going to read it, discuss it, and kind of try to digest what he actually means when he says faith without works is dead. It's probably not what you think. So let's read through it today and discuss it. Also, make sure you check out livingchristian.org. It's our website. It's got an apparel store. We've got Bible verse list. We've got podcasts, YouTube videos. We've got all sorts of resources to help you live a Christian life seven days a week. Check it out at livingchristian.org. All right, let's get to the episode and talk about James 2 today. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of the Bible Reading and Coffee Drinking Instagram Live, YouTube video, podcast, however you're watching or listening to this. Uh, I'm grateful that you found me. I'm grateful that uh, you're willing to take 30 minutes or so out of your day and uh, read the Bible a little bit with me, and I'll try to answer some of your questions at the end. So today, we're in the second book, or second chapter of James. So if you missed the last episode, we read James 1. We're going to go through the entire book of James. James is written by Jesus' half-brother, and it's full of uh, different knowledge and wisdom and kind of um, instructions, so to speak, on how we need to be living a Christian lifestyle. So in James 2, <clears throat> we're going to talk about a warning against prejudice, and we're going to talk about faith without Good deeds is dead, which is going to be a, a great uh, kind of uh, great kind of discussion. So let's dive in to James two, and uh, we'll uh, we'll answer some questions after we get done reading. Okay, let me get my uh, old man glasses on for those watching this, because that's what happens when you get fifty years old. You can't uh, you can't read. All right, warning against prejudice, James two, dear brothers, dear brothers and sisters. How can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give, if you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but do not say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor, well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil Motives. Okay, so right out of the gate, James is giving us a little bit of a, a lesson on not judging people by certainly about how they look in this instance, what he's talking about, not prejudging who you think somebody is uh, versus what they uh, what they really are. Uh, so we can certainly take that wisdom all the way through today. Uh, we judge, we prejudge. Uh, there's a lot of bias out in the world. Uh, a lot of prejudice in the world that uh, us as Christians uh, certainly don't need to be a part of. Uh, we are all God's children, uh, that is for sure, and uh, we need to make sure we treat each other that way as well. All right, so let's uh, dive into... Uh, we're on five. Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love them? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the Scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. So he's establishing some grand rules here, and we're going to get to it on what he's talking about in the second half uh, of James 2. But right now, he's establishing the fact that, hey, we need to love each other. We need to take care of each other. Certainly, Take care of the people that are less fortunate than we are. Take care of the poor. They will inherit the kingdom of God. It references that, and he's quoting another chapter of the Bible, okay? So it is sinful to ignore those people. It is sinful to prejudge them. It is sinful to treat them lower than what we are, okay? Verse 10, uh, for the person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. Whoo, that's a tough one to digest, isn't it? That is uh, James 2.10. So many times that we judge other people by the way they sin, uh, and, and sometimes our sins are not as bad as other people's sins. Uh, that's what we like to believe, <clears throat> and that helps us justify our own sinful behavior. What James is saying here is, for a person who keeps all laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. And that's a tough one. I mean, you, if you go through just the Ten Commandments, right, he's saying if you 
uh, don't honor your father and mother, right? You're just as guilty as somebody who commits murder or commits or breaks all of the commandments. That's a tough one to digest, but we all need to pray about that and kind of really let that sink in a little bit because it's tough. It's tough. All right. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. There's my example. Uh, so if you murder someone but do not commit adultery, you still have broken the law. Verse 12. Uh, so whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful as he judges you. Okay, a couple things before we dive into the uh, the faith without good works is uh, dead kind of uh, discussion. Um, so what he's setting up and <clears throat> wants us to understand are two things, right? One is the poor, in this example, <clears throat> people that are different from you and me, don't be prejudiced against them, regardless of how they're different. In this instance, he's talking about the poor and the rich and so forth. But you could you could correlate that to a lot of different things. Okay, don't be too don't be judgmental towards them. You have to love them. We need to be taking care of the other people. Now, I would also, and the second half is talking about sin, and one sin is just as bad as the other sin. So my my overarching thing that I like to take after the first half of James two is don't judge others because they sin differently than you do. Every day we fall. Every day we struggle. Every day we sin in some form or fashion. Little sins, big sins. All on the gamut. All on the spectrum there. A lot of times we like to justify our sin, or at least rationalize it to where it's not that bad, but in God's eyes it is. Okay? In God's eyes, it is. He gives us these laws to keep us on a morality in this earth to where we do good things, and we take care of one another, and we help others out. So don't get too judgmental on other people's sins, especially if they haven't accepted Christ yet. Um, help them get free of their sins, for they know not what they do, okay? Help them... Uh, stop those sins that they're kind of bound to. Just because the devil's got a, a stronger hold on them than you doesn't make us any better than they are, okay? We need to repent, we need to help each other out, and we need to take care of one another. Now, saying that, how do we take care, and what does that actually mean? Let's dive into the second half of James 2, all right? Faith without good deeds is dead. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. Then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith isn't by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. All right, I have all that highlighted in my Bible, and I want to talk about that for a second. So you got to take in context the first half of James 2, where he's talking about... Uh, not being prejudiced against each other and taking care of the poor and sin being equal, whether it's one or 15 cents. Now he pivots and says, okay, now if you have faith in Jesus Christ, if you have faith in God, what is it our responsibility? If we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, it's our responsibility to go out and help others who may not be saved yet and help others who are saved that are just in need. So it's not just good enough um, to wish somebody well. We need to help these people. What he's not saying is that faith without good works is not faith. What he's saying is you're not working on your faith. You're not growing your faith. You're not uh, involved in it. You're just saying, I believe in Jesus and I'm, I'm saved. Good. Great. But God wants more out of us than that. What he doesn't want us to do is accept Jesus, know who Jesus is, read our Bible, and never spread the word, never help anybody else out, and just sit in our own little salvation, okay? That's wonderful. I'm happy for you that you were saved, that you accepted Christ, but now go help somebody else do that. Go help somebody else find Jesus, okay? Go do those things. That's what he is talking about, those good works uh, it's not that you don't have faith if you don't do good works. What he's saying is good works help 
your relationship with Christ and help you fulfill the responsibility of your salvation. Okay? Verse 18. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. I love that. You say you have faith, but you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good work, good deeds is useless? I love the fact that he, he's equating just because you know who Jesus is, just because you know who God is, doesn't mean that you know, you're doing his work. Verse 21, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He even called the, uh, the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so his faith is dead without good works. All right, so what James is saying here, what he's not saying, um, is that you have to do good works in order to be saved. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is once you accept Christ, once you have your salvation, you need to show it out to the world because that's how other people can see your faith. You need to do good deeds in order to work on your faith. You need to do good deeds in order to show others about your faith. And it hopes that they learn about Jesus through you. So faith without good works is dead. Doesn't mean that your salvation is dead, but your faith will wobble and it'll be easier to fall into sinful behavior for sure if you don't continue to kind of foster your faith. And part of that is through good works. That makes sense? Hopefully that makes sense. I think it makes sense. <laughs> uh, I, I see there's a lot of comments on here that uh, a lot of things going back and forth and there's people complaining about it. So uh, it does just all be kind of, we just read talking about being uh, loving one another and being uh, not judging one another. So let's let's be open-minded and uh, stick with uh, what we're trying to do here. So, all right. So uh, I'm going to uh, answer a couple of questions uh, after, uh, once you do that. So if you're live here on Instagram, make sure you put your questions on the bottom. If you're listening uh, to this on the podcast or watching on YouTube, give me a couple of seconds and I'll answer a couple of questions. Have a sip of coffee first. All right, let's see what kind of questions are uh, down here on the bottom on my Instagram Live. Uh, all right, come on, put some questions on here, and then I'll answer a question for you. Okay, so we got one in here right now. How do we fully trust God when it feels everything is wrong? Out loud, I say I trust Him and that He knows best, but in my head, I have thoughts of that He isn't with me sometimes. I know He is always with us, but how do we prevent those thoughts? I didn't. That's a great question. All right. The world, the devil, I'll put the, I'll use the devil first and we'll talk about the world in a minute. The devil loves to distract us. He wants nothing more than to, for you to doubt your faith a little bit. And this whole world is kind of built around pulling you away from Jesus and pulling you away from God. Okay? So you're not alone in this struggle, buddy. Okay? I promise you, you're not alone. There are many times that this world will beat you down, and this culture will beat you down. And the devil is using other people, and he's using TV and the internet and our phones and everything else to pull us away from God and try to get us to doubt our faith. So how do we counteract that? Okay, Part of it, for me anyways, and you can take this uh, as advice, and hopefully um, it helps. Um, for me, when I feel that... I'm either doubting my faith or I feel distant, distant from God. Um, what I find, for me anyways, is I'm allowing these distractions to pull me away from God. I'm getting too focused on this world, my job, uh, social media, uh, the television, politics, whatever it may be. I get too focused on those things, and it's pulling me away from God. So I try to silence that kind of cultural noise a little bit, and that tends to help me out. 
So you can take a fast, take a fast away from your phone, take a fast away from social media, take a fast away from the television and focus on those things that foster your relationship with God. Reading your Bible, praying, uh, listening to Christian music, get into church, get into a small group, get into a Bible study, whatever it is that you spend the time that you normally would spend uh, in worldly things and spend that with time with God. Now, one other practical kind of um, thing I would say, a lot of comments here, uh, I would say is this. Spend quality time with God each and every day. What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, I think we all do things in a 24-hour day. Let's say we sleep eight hours and we, we're up for 16 hours and we work for eight hours. We've got eight other hours in the day. I'm just using that as an arbitrary uh, time frame. Um, a lot of times we treat God as an afterthought. Um, we'll pray before meals, uh, uh, possibly, hopefully, uh, sometimes we pray when we get up, but that's about it. Maybe you attend a, a, a podcast or something like that to try to get, uh, some exposure, um, to the Bible, but we don't really foster it ourselves. I think if you can, if all of us can carve out 20 minutes, we'll call it 20 minutes a day. Uh, that's it. Just 20 minutes, uh, to spend quality time with God, just you and God. And what does that consist of? You can read a whole, I mean, I just read a whole chapter of James in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I talked about it at the time, at the same time. So you can read a chapter of the Bible. You can pray. You can do all those things easily in 20 minutes. I mean, I know I on the YouVersion Bible app, now there's a lot of Bible reading plans that you can go through those, and they take five minutes. But I think it needs to be more than that. Um, so carve out 20 minutes in the morning, uh, every day. I don't care what time it is. Uh, wake up 20 minutes earlier than you normally do, whatever, and, and and spend time with Jesus in the morning, reading the Word and praying, and I promise it will foster that relationship, bud. I mean, I, I, and it, it'll help you feel closer to God, uh, but do it every single day, right? Just keep working on it. Just keep uh, plugging away and make it a habit in your life, and I promise you, the rest of the stuff will kind of fade away, and the devil will get discouraged and uh, understand that that time is for God, and God's going to really love it, okay? So work on that every single day. Uh, do 20 minutes, a little quiet time in the morning, uh, and it uh, it will do wonders to your life, I promise you. All right, uh, how can you tell what is a distraction versus what is a pull from God? I think, Tiffany, I think they're both a lot of times the same thing. A, a, the God or de the devil will use distractions to pull you away from God. So whether it's a distraction or a pull, in my opinion, it's the same thing. A distraction pulls you away from God. I don't know what other way to define that. Uh, so Tiffany, I, I would say that they're the same thing. All right. Um, how old were you when you found your calling? I'm having a hard time figuring out what my purpose is. Uh, I don't. I'm 50 now. I'm not sure I know what my calling is. I'm just following and doing what God tells me to do. Um, you know, I, I've, I went to college, um, worked a normal secular marketing job, as, and uh, still do, um, for a long time. Uh, so if you think this living Christian uh, platform is my calling, it probably is. Uh, but in reality, I think it's simpler than that, if that makes sense. Uh, I think it's simpler than that. I think our purpose here on this earth... Uh, what God wants us to do is what I have tattooed on my, is the greatest commandment, right? So somebody asked Jesus what the greatest commandment was, and his response was, you've, you guys, if you follow me for a while, you've heard me say this, his response was, love God with all your heart, soul, your mind. The second greatest commandment, which is just as powerful as the first, love one another as you love yourself. I think that is our purpose on this planet. We need to love and honor God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and then love each other. Love one another, right? That's our purpose. Now, how we go about that could be different tactics. So I, I think what your purpose, if you're searching for your purpose, my advice to you would be to focus on loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and loving one another, loving your neighbor, loving people around you. And if you do that, you'll find avenues. God will put things in your path to do, right? And, and the second that I... I went to God and asked him, I go, you know, I don't feel like I'm doing enough to show my faith. And and he put this platform in front of me. 
I started on Twitter, started on Instagram, doing all these things, and now I got podcasts and YouTube videos and whole website and everything else, right? But God does that. I'm just kind of here doing what he asked me to do, if that makes sense. So even though, you know, I'm this may be my purpose, quote unquote, my purpose really is to love God with all your heart and soul and your mind, okay? Period. And then love, love each other. And then God will put tactics in front of you to help you love one another, like I'm doing here. All right, one more question, and then we'll get out of here for the weekend. Um, and how old was I? I'm sorry, that, that was the question. I, I don't know. I started this uh, platform about six years ago, but I would say when I really truly understood that my purpose was to love God, I, I probably was in my 30s. I hate to say that. I'd lo- I, mean, I was baptized at a young age, but I really didn't understand what it meant uh, until I was probably in my 30s. All right, can, I, can you save this live? Uh, yes, uh, I save all the lives right here on Instagram under the video area, but if you can't find them, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, check out uh, my YouTube page. It has them all there. Okay, so all the lives are there. Uh, all the ones we've been doing for two years are on there. So just search up uh, Living Christian on uh, on YouTube or Bible Reading Coffee Drinking, either way, and you'll find them there. So all the ones that are there. This one will be there. It takes me about an hour or so to kind of get it up on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, so check them out on YouTube. That's the best way to best way to find it. Uh, do you also run the Living Christian Twitter account? I do. I do. That was where I started, Gabby. I uh, started on Twitter uh, for whatever reason. I I, my, I have a personal Twitter account that I never use, but I was on it one day and uh, I, I followed a somebody. I think it was Bible Lock Screens, which is a, a buddy of mine here on Instagram. Now I've got to know him, and I followed him on Instagram and I followed him on Twitter. I think, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. And I, I posted a, a Bible verse. And on my personal Twitter feed, and got people reacted to it. I'm like, you know what? I, I want to start a Twitter uh, handle that just posts Bible verses. And that's what I did. I just started posting Bible verses. And then I would take those Bible verses and make them images and put them on Instagram. So that's kind of where it grew. Now we got TikTok and YouTube and all this other stuff. Uh, but uh, I started there over on Twitter or X or whatever they call them nowadays. I'll still call it Twitter because I don't understand uh, <laughs> why he changed the name, but whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, so that's why I started. So if you don't follow me on uh, Twitter or Facebook or uh, you know TikTok or YouTube or anything, go check it out. Uh, you can actually go to my website, livingchristian.org, and scroll to the bottom, and there's all the social media platforms that uh, I do right in there. I think, actually, if you go to the link on Instagram, uh, and they're all on there as well. So check them out. Follow me everywhere. I got different content on uh, threads and everything else. So I try to do uh, a little bit different content on each platform as best I can. So, all right, let's save a quick prayer. We'll dive back into James on uh, Monday and continue that with James 3. So let's have a sip of coffee and then uh, we'll, um, we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm thanking you so much today for bringing us together on this platform. So no matter whether somebody's watching or listening to this, I'm thankful that they're joining. I'm thankful that they got to hear the Word of God today through James 2. I'm thankful because you brought us together. This is our purpose, Lord. We know this. We love you so much, and we love each other. And by loving each other, we're joining together and, and getting together and reading the Bible together. And that's what we know. That's our purpose that's part of our good deeds that we're trying to do to make sure we foster our faith, as James pointed out today. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a couple of things today. One, help us understand what good deeds you want us to do. We have faith in you. We have faith in Jesus and our salvation, and we're asking you to guide us to what those good works and those good deeds are. Sometimes we don't know what you want us to do, Lord, and we guess, and we we try different things, and sometimes they work out, and sometimes they don't. I'm asking if you could just guide us in that to help us have a little bit of clarity and wisdom. I would appreciate it. The second ask I I, I come to you with, Lord, is just soften people's hearts. As we're doing this recording today on Instagram Live, there's a lot of people bickering and, and spewing hateful things in the comments, Lord, and I'm just asking you to soften their hearts. I'm asking you to just help them love each other and maybe just have a little bit more of an open mind. What I mean by that is sometimes we get stuck in what we think is true. 
And even most of the time, that's probably misguided. So I'm asking you to open those people's hearts and minds to where they can hear your word and understand that you love them, even if they don't love others. But we love you, and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday. Uh, Read some more of the Bible. Dive in. As I talked about, spend 20 minutes each morning just in quiet time with with God and watch it change your life. Till next time, keep Jesus on your heart and forever on your mind. God bless you guys.